And eSource is basically a LinkedIn for the Northeastern community. Um, what, you know, obviously, an advantage of going to a great university like Northeastern is that you have this lifetime of connections around the world. So I thought I would just start out by asking, like, when you think about Northeastern and your network, what's on your mind in terms of what you would hope to get from the network as well as what you might want to give? And you can post some thoughts in the chat box. So what might you want from your network and what might you want to give? And actually, you know, I'm gonna share a little bit of information. All right, now we've got some career assistance, give and get, thank you. Being a resource to other people. Ah, accessing other colleagues, right. And, and people coming to Lisbon, Eduardo, may like to know that you're there. That's a great idea when you're traveling. That's a great idea when you're traveling internationally, you may wanna connect with alums in that community. And sometimes people use a platform like this if they're relocating to Colorado and they wanna to talk to people in the Denver area for career advice or just living advice, that could be good as well. Yes, growing your business, um, building an audience, um, getting input from people that might, um, Nancy, be relevant to your business would be great. And I'll also let you know if I share the next slide. Uh, let me see what is going down on with this. Hmm. Let me just see why this is not letting me. There we go. Um, just to give you a sense of the breadth of the network currently. Um, so we do have over 5,000 users. Um, about 2,800, almost 2,900 are alumni. That's where we started growing the network and um, over 2,000 student users. But a cool thing is that we do have 35 states represented and 30 countries. And we'll also be talking about that we have some affinity-based groups that have the potential for discussion as well as industry-based groups and some mentoring programs. Those are formal mentoring programs. Um, you might be familiar with the co-op mentor program which take place in four locations. Um, and there's an honors mentor program, for example. But you know, I, I think <clears throat> the best thing for me to do is to jump on the platform so that you can really <clears throat> walk through what it's like. So I'm guessing that many of you are familiar with LinkedIn. So in a sense, knowing about LinkedIn will help inform how you use the platform, except that it looks different here. So this red bar going across the page is your menu bar. And I'm just gonna start, I mean, obviously the main thing people wanna do is find other people to connect with. So I'm gonna start with that. This gives you a lot of different options along the top. I do find that the general search, you can search by name, is helpful or you can search by keywords and job titles. Under more filters, you've got Northeastern degrees or people from your primary college at Northeastern, or you may want to find um, people that did some of the same clubs as you may have done. One thing to know is that alumni cannot search the students on the platform, but students can search for alumni. And so I want to go to, because I actually have someone in mind, but this will show you how it works, I'm going to London. And I always forget to hit apply. And I am searching in finance. I could have also put that under the industry. And so what you will see is, you know, this is how the profiles come up. There is a let's connect button there. Um, but I want to show you Alva's 
profile, just to give you a feeling. So we see her work history here, her education history, which is extensive. So a cool thing about um, the AnySource platform is when you create a profile, alumni check off help topics. There's about eight or nine of them. You're checking off things that you'd be willing to share advice about. So what this also means is that when you're reaching out to someone, um, you can see that. And I think it creates a feeling of a warm introduction. You know, you know what it is. Oh, they are up for talking about entrepreneurship advice. I should, I should reach out to them or they're willing to share feedback on resumes. I feel comfortable reaching out. You're not limited to these topics, but it, it helps just when you're making that ask um, to know more about what they've checked off. So people indicate, indicate their industry expertise. So this person actually I can tell is a member, is a mentor with the co-op mentor program. And these are the groups that she's involved with out of the ones that we offer. And it looks like she has an application in here that I can see for the, uh, another mentor program. So coming back to this is, and I like too that you can see other recommendations of people to connect with on the right hand side here. And, but the key thing is to actually do the actual reach out. And a cool thing here is we try to make this a little easy for you. If you click on one of these templates, it lets you fill in the blanks, but I would recommend customizing it, you know, put, put your own flavor on it. But the idea here is to be brief. So we have a couple of different options here, but you can also write your own from scratch. You could take that off. Um, the goal is just to say a little bit about why you're interested in them something about yourself and a key thing. So I guess a key consideration here is my recommendation would be to, to request a meeting of some kind. I know that some people will, you know, you may have some simple things that you want to ask that could be handled in an email exchange on the platform, or sometimes this goes off the platform. So think about what, what's going to serve you best. Um, I always feel like the actual making contact is helpful. But make sure that you're making a clear request of what you're asking for the other person. Do you want them to respond? Do you want to have a conversation by email? Do you want to have um, a get together? And there is a request a meeting function here, although it doesn't let you include the message. But at, at the point that you've decided that you're going to meet, you could then hit request a meeting. Some people will share their calendars through this platform. With other people, you'll have a discussion back and forth about when you're gonna meet. So know that you can do video conferencing through the platform, which is nice. You don't have to share personal information. You don't have to, to set up a Zoom call. But again, it's always gonna be with the preference, um, the preference of the person that you're contacting. One thing is we definitely advise against reaching out and asking people for jobs or internships directly. So, it's always good to just think about, you know, what could this person, what does this person know about that could be useful to me? So it's always better to seek out information and you can still ask them for job search or internship search advice. But if you ask that off the top, it may, may dissuade them from interacting with you. So just going back here. I you know, I will say that I wish that there was a 100% perfect response rate on the platform, but I've discovered that there's not. Um, we do have a good response rate. Sometimes it takes people several days to reply. Um, so it is good to reach out to a number of people based on your interests. Any, any questions about that part so far? You can just add something to the chat if you have some questions. Um, one thing I'm seeing based on a question, yes, so the NU source, it's um, nusource.northeastern.edu.
And um, setting up a profile is quick and actually now it will give you the option of importing a lot of information from your LinkedIn. So that makes it really quick and easy. So I think you can have your platform up and running in about five minutes. It is recommended that you use a photo. Those profiles get more activity. And also when you are taking a look here, like if I um, just pull up another, another one. You can also um, bookmark people you're interested in talking with um, by, by clicking on that little bookmark tool. So that can help you keep track of what you've looked at. One other fun feature is that you can actually see a map view. So some of you, someone mentioned the Midwest. So this will give you a feeling of how our numbers are around the globe. It's obviously large in places like New York, DC, Boston, um, the Bay Area. So we can pull this out and take a bit of a look internationally. We have three people in uh, Portugal where Eduardo is. So some international spread here. Um, London is one of our larger areas and all of this you know we continue to do outreach and continue to grow the platform as well there is um, a general discussion feed for the platform um, so that's where some people can post a question about anything and then with the groups we have the possibility of more specialized interest um, so we have industry groups Let's say our marketing so here, you can see how large the group is. You can join, most groups are open groups. There are some, this is a public group. There are some private groups. And then this group would also have a, a, its own discussion feed. And you can see some information about um, the actual members of the group as well. So this may also give you ideas of people that you wanna reach out to. Um, based on some activity in the groups. And if I go back to groups, we also have affinity-based groups. The Honors Program, Young Alums, um, Black Alumni, LGBTQ community. So these are just like lots of different ways that you can find connection with people. Also over here under directory is actually the full Northeastern alumni directory. What is different here is, so here Ayushi does have a profile on the platform. Um, the, these other folks are people that are not officially on any source, but they're part of our larger alumni database. Something that we're also gonna be launching very soon is called Projects. And we're gonna be inviting alumni to, if you have a project need that you would like a student to work on with you for, I think we're gonna say up to about 40 hours for four to six weeks, or 40 hours total. This will be sort of like a job board, but it will be for projects that alumni are offering to students. So that's coming soon. One thing that I'm going to send out um, as, par as part of the follow-up to this webinar is just sort of a list of steps, you know, create a profile, upload a picture, um, connect your LinkedIn, try reaching out to find people, try doing some exploring the community, um, things like that. Um, so, you know, I'm seeing like James saying, those are some variables you'd be looking at would be geography and the area of entrepreneurship. I know that I've, you can do some searches very well with looking for like co-founder will we'll pull up a lot of a lot of our entrepreneurship alums and there is an entrepreneurship group. Um, and the projects will be unpaid at this time. We may open it up for paid in the future, but we are going to start with a pilot that will be unpaid. So again, a lot of folks coming up here. Um, and the active users is people that have, are either currently on or have been recently on the platform. 
And if I go into my own, um, the, the other thing actually within the profile that's important to know is that you can set your own preferences. Also, you don't have to worry about being inundated with contacts. Um, you were able to indicate um, number of contacts per month. Um, you can include your, your schedule here, your calendar. There is a matching quiz to kind of increase the referrals, uh, the suggested connections that would come your way. Um, and also privacy, if you need to take a break, you can turn this off for a period of time. Um, and then also, you know, I, I think one of the gratifying things on this platform is um, to have students reach out to you. I think some of the reasons people join or maybe an unexpected thing is potential contact with students reaching out um, for advice and mentoring. So that's, that's a fun, fun feature as well. I think a lot of people look to give back in that way. Um, let me just go back to my slides here. So just to show you again, these are the full, full help topics that people may check off and we sometimes add or change those, but right now that's, that's what it is. So people may also reach out for um, discussions of work-life balance, um, even going back to grad school as well. Again, just these messaging tips, um, keeping it brief, um, Oh, one other thing that is available for us, if we do have any students here, there is something called the, a pathway, and it's an optional feature that you just say yes to, and it actually takes you through a series of steps about, um, about informational interviews and how to write a good request, how to conduct yourself during an informational interview, um, and those kind of tips. So it's a very quick way to get up to speed or to um, brush up on informational interviewing. Um, one other key thing I want to mention is there is an app coming. A lot of people have asked about that just for the convenience of having it on their phone. Um, the platform does expect to be releasing an app version of, um, later this year, so we're very excited about that. I think we'll go back to the platform. Um, some people asked if you needed any special access code. You don't. You just have to go through a sign-up process. Um, and, and sometimes if you have not connected with your Northeastern credentials in a while, some things may pop up that we can help you with for, um, for moving, that, moving it forward. But it should be easy to create your profile. I just want to go back to the platform. Um, is anyone anyone um, on the call that's actually used the platform and has any experience to share with what that was like? Yes, so all, all alumni can access it. You just need to create your account. And why don't we also just in the remaining few minutes that we have, who would like to, let's see, maybe we'll just take one of these. Who was saying, where was the uh, Midwest? Uh, Let's see. Well, Eric, uh, Eric, you're trying to make contacts in the in the Midwest. Can you just let us know um, something more specific about that? We can give that a try. Oh, sure. Um, so I'm a software engineer and pretty isolated in Minnesota, and just want to find out uh, if there's any entrepreneurs or other software engineers um, in Minnesota or Wisconsin Great. or Illinois. 
Great, I love it. I'm kind of curious because I know that's not one of our peak areas, but I know we do have alums there. All right, we got some people and I can also add, I'm just going to do it by job title. Oh, all right, not exact title. Um, so if I clear that one, um, and you also said entrepreneurs. Yeah, that'd be great. actually, so you can see our numbers there are small, <laughs> and you know, but you're actually you're raising a really good point. This is this is a great resource, and as we are growing it. You know, there are times when it makes sense to combine it with LinkedIn. Um, I think both can work well together. Um, so, if, and also if you use Northeastern's um, university page on LinkedIn, there's a menu bar on the left where you can click alumni and any search that you do there would be of Northeastern alums. Um, so in your case, that may make sense to do that as well. Okay, thanks. Sure. And again, you could use the map view here too as well. Um, looking at if you were targeting a certain area ge geographically, that would work as well. Actually, I don't know why the markers are not showing up here right now. Oh, it's, you know what? It's given me the map view just for, um, just for Minnesota. I just take a look at the map view. If I am Eduarda in Portugal, I can uh, we, we need to grow Portugal, in fact. Uh, we will do better in France, I think. Again, just gives you some ideas. Um, and those of you that are on this call too, you may want to know that we do have that honors mentor program. Um, the co-op mentor program um, is scaled back a little bit during the pandemic, but it takes place in California, DC, Washington, um, New York, and London. So the idea would be that when students are in those locations away from the Boston campus, they have the opportunity to be paired with a mentor in that location. Um, yes, and you know what, I'm going to take you to, let me switch pages here. Um, actually, so this is our alumni page and under opportunities. Oh, I'm sorry. I always have trouble getting this. Uh, okay, under the networking section. So this is actually a nice comparison of some of the features of a new source compared to LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, here's where there's a join button. If you do have difficulties, there is a troubleshooting page here. Um, so yeah, right from here, you can, can start the process. Um, any, other, any other things that you're wondering about as you, you know, and definitely thinking about contacts for business reasons, what, you know, we ask that you're not like trying to sell directly to people on the platform, but definitely if you're, you know, let's say you're trying to assess in Minnesota what's going on there for your software business. Um, it would be an opportunity to ask people and speak with people in a different area. Um, and sometimes actually an interesting thing about a networking platform like this is that you can reach out to people who are maybe in your business field in another location where you're not competitors. 
with each other. So that can be beneficial as well. So, um, yeah, Daniel, um, we can work on the password issue. Uh, um, that is a case sometimes if you haven't been uh, connected to your Northeastern account in a while or some other reasons, but we can, we can help you with that. Yeah, and the, the LinkedIn, when you're creating your profile, it'll simply be a button um, that will link you. It will ask you, I think, for your password for LinkedIn. Um, but contact, contact me if, if you have any problems. I'll give you my email. I'm actually the automatic contact person for any source. So even if you message through the platform, that will come, come my way. So I definitely encourage you to check this out. Um, it, you know, it is a easy way to start building your network also either for a specific, very specific goal, or if you're just looking to reconnect with Northeastern alums and see the value of those connections, um, or if you want to just be available to students that may want to reach out, um, all of these can be new ways to get connected. I appreciate you uh, checking it out. With the LinkedIn permission, I do think it's okay. It, it really is pulling in your your profile, so I think it's okay to guess to that. I recall if it gives you options that are more specific, um, but I have done it and it, nothing bad happened. But if you need more conversation around that, we can talk. Last last chance for any. Questions and do feel free, you know, at any time to reach out to me. One more message coming through. Great. Well, I appreciate all of you taking an interest in this. Um, we will be sending you that follow up list of some things to try on the platform. I'm also most importantly interested in your feedback. You know, having come to this webinar, if you have some experiences there, if you have thoughts of how we could make this a better experience, as well as um, comments about the value of it, I would love to hear that from you. And when you do actually have a networking contact, it will ask you to just quickly rate your experience. So that's another way that we get feedback because we want to keep making this a valuable resource. So thank you today for coming. Um, we hope to see you at future webinars and programs. And I wish you well with, with staying connected and helping to make this network so, so meaningful and valuable to everyone. Thank you so much for coming today.